Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. I've described weeks on the Hot 100 as deceptively busy before, where it seems like there's a lot of shuffling around, but not a lot has really happened that'll affect the long term. Just as common, though, are the weeks where I'd argue there's a little bit more going on in a deceptively quiet week. Just because there weren't many new arrivals, which will thankfully keep this shorter, doesn't mean that there aren't things worth watching, especially with some implications worth to come in the next week or two. Case in point, our top 10, where we've got another new number one and a song that I frankly did not expect to seize the top spot so quickly, Heartless by The Weeknd. And while there are some questions of how long it's going to hold the top spot that we will get to, it's got the most robust trajectory I've seen in a while. Top spot on sales and on-demand streaming, a well-performing video, and real radio traction, which in the holiday season is pretty meaningful. Now this places circles by Post Malone at number two and in a bit of an awkward position. Elbowed off the top spot on sales, muscled back on streaming, and wavering near the top on radio. Look, it was always a mostly weak number one one, but I predict it's not likely to regain the top spot. And the reason for that has to come with our number three in its big return to the top ten, All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. And make no mistake, if there's a year that's going to fight for that number one, it's this one. It's dominant in streaming, a sales revival, holiday radio spins. Yeah, if it weren't for the weekend securing an early position, she'd already have a much better spot at the top, and even then, she's got momentum on her side. Now, all this is leaving Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi out in the cold at number four, with shrinking sales and radio that slipped into free fall. Good. Unfortunately, it's likely that Memories by Maroon 5 will probably replace it from number five. A good radio run and strong sales, unfortunately, is going to do that. And it's exactly the sort of saccharine gunk that will do well around the holiday season. Then we got Good As Hell by Lizzo, not to step back to number six. She'll probably recover thanks to the new video, but radio dominance can't quite ignore the sudden sales weakness, and she doesn't have streaming, so not a good sign. Also pushed back, we have Roxanne by Arizona Zervis at number seven. Yes, it's making a radio run now, but it's a little softer on streaming than I expected, which might not be a good sign in some of the weeks ahead. Then next up, we got a breakthrough into the top 10 that I did not expect at all. Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee at number 8. Because streaming and the radio is giving holiday music the sort of push that's pretty robust and kind of hard to break. Which year if you're an artist looking to drop an album around this time, yeah, not promising. And around things out, we got Lose You to Love Me by Selena Gomez at number 9. A bad streaming week, but you know what, the sales are okay and the radio push is massive. And along the same logic, we got 10,000 Hours by Dan and Shay and Justin Bieber at number 10. Slightly better sales but way more inconsistent radio, which, again, kind of a sign of weakness right now. And while we're there, our losers and dropouts. A couple of really big and long-running ones here, too. Goodbyes by Post Malone featuring Young Thug, Shug by DaBaby, Tip of My Tongue by Kenny Chesney, Hot Girl Summer by Megan Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj, and Ty Dolla Sign. Then we got Good Vibes by Chris Jansen. And finally, One Thing Right by Marshmello and Kane Brown. But more predictably, since with the, you got the mass return of holiday music, we saw systemic losses across the board that'll likely be pretty entrenched in the coming weeks. Because again, this impacts both streaming and radio hits. It's gonna hurt a lot of different songs. So sure, we get the expected continued dips for Jerry Sprunger by Tory Lanez and T-Pain at 97, and Follow God from Kanye West at 91, along with the expected debut loss for Suicide by YNW Melly at 86, Vita by Bad Bunny at 63, and Trippy Red with Who Needs Love at 82, and Six Kiss with YNW Melly and the now past Juice World at 80. And here's where there's an elephant in the room. Yes, holiday music is entrenching itself, and you can make the argument that Juice World's career was kind of flailing in a way that XXXTentacion's wasn't when he died, but I do expect a chart revival of some kind next week, but I would not put a lot of stock in how big it'll be. Just saying. So even though Bandit by him and Youngboy Never Broke Again fell to 40 this week, while it will rebound, I don't see him making it to the top 10 or anything. Maybe a lucid dreams of the big comeback. And that's the thing about this time of year. Even songs that might have 
momentum are going to get short-circuited by the holidays, which is why Lover by Taylor Swift fell down to 32, and even though I'm leaving by Luke Combs slid down to 38, and Take What You Want by Post Malone featuring Travis Scott and Ozzy Osbourne's at 60. Now, granted, the bigger impact is on the old 2019 hits getting pushed out, like Truth Hurts by Lizzo at 22, Only Human by the Jonas Brothers at 34, Ransom by Lil Tech at 37, Graveyard by Halsey at 45, Talk by Khalid at 49, I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber at 50, Baby by Lil Baby and Da Baby at 51, How Do You Sleep by Sam Smith at 54, and Old Town Row by Lil Nas X featuring Billy Ray Cyrus slipping down to 31. Also, you got a few stragglers that have never taken off properly, like Heat by Chris Brown featuring Gunna at 55, 223s by YNW Melly and 9 Glock 9 at 74, but they suck, so I'm not complaining. And you see the cause of all this? It's in our returns and gains, which outside of some odd stragglers that won't really last, like FM by Lil TJ at 93, Tusa by Carol G and Nicki Minaj at 95, and Ritmo by the Black Eyed Peas and J Balvin at 98, the rest is holiday music. Dean Martin brings back Let It Snow at 28, The Christmas Song by Nat King Cole returns at 33, Feliz Navidad by Jose Felicicano at 39, Sleigh Ride by the Renettes is at 43, and Gene Autry has both Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Here Comes Santa Claus at 44 and 48 respectively. And this also impacts the majority of our gains as well. We've already talked about Brenda Lee and Mariah Carey, but we've also got A Holly Jolly Christmas by Burt Ives at 18, Jingle Bell Rock by Bobby Helms at 23, It's the Most Wonderful Time by Andy Williams at 24, and Last Christmas by Wham at 27. And outside of that, and The weekend taking the number one, our gains are pretty scant, with a boost to Homesick by Kane Brown at 88, kind of makes sense around this time of year, and Show Yourself by Adina Menzel and Evan Rachel Wood at 70, because it's from Frozen, and again, fitting this time of year. Anyway, we got a short list of new arrivals, so I hope you excuse me for keeping this kind of brief, if only because I got a massive pileup of work around this time of year, and you know what, just sticking with this list, Starting off with number 83, Tiptoe by Roddy Rich, featuring a boogie with the hood. Better know I had put the drip on. Ask me how many niggas I done put on. My private plane's about to fly with the good old. I fuck with bougie bitches, fuck a ho So apparently Roddy Rich dropped his debut album not too long ago. And I'll be honest, I've been kind of on the fence of whether or not to really delve deeper into what he's put out. Given that his content just has not impressed me all that much. And going through this song, yeah, I'm still kind of hesitant to hear more because I'm not really impressed. A big problem is Roddy Rich seemingly trying for an offbeat double time in order to start up both his chorus and his verse. That sounds really painfully awkward against admittedly some great production with the layers of acoustic guitars, the flutes, and some of the crooning behind him, which he doesn't need to do and go into that double time because otherwise he writes the beat pretty damn well. Of course, the other problem, as expected, is the content, which is the same by the numbers flexing and gunplay and treating women as disposable that we always get. But the only thing remotely interesting about A Boogie's verse is the SpongeBob reference and how he really seems to have a passing relationship with any sort of consistent flow. I don't know, the feeling I get is that there were some elements that were added in order to make this song seem a little bit more interesting because the content sure as hell isn't, but all these elements only serve to detract from what could have been a much better song. I don't know, it's not bad, but I get the feeling Feeling this should be a lot better. Number 72, Like It's Christmas by the Jonas Brothers. Never wanna stop feeling like the first thing on your wish list. So I don't think I've honed in on this enough in 2019, but let me get on the record now early. Even as someone who never really cared about the Jonas Brothers, their comeback has been one of the most lazy and artistically bankrupt non-events this year. So why not end things off with a quick Christmas song cash in? And let's start off with the obvious. You made the effort to get an actual horn section and produce it well, which you couldn't even do in your own damn album. So why are all your hand claps so obviously synthetic? Or was it part of all the shameless recycling of the DNCE song you're interpolating or the blatant notes crib from Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You and all the cadence and build up, especially on that hook. And that's about where I run out of things to really say about this because it might be one of the most rote and flagrantly bland Christmas songs I have heard in some time, with zero pathos, zero warmth, and anything close to unique writing. Look, if you're trying to add something to the overall holiday canon, you gotta try a little bit harder than this, because otherwise, you're gonna sound a lot corporate, plastic, and inessential. You know, like this. 
Next. Number 68, No Idea by Don Tolliver. It's not a good sign when I look at an artist, see that apparently he was responsible for a guest appearance on an album that I covered, and then have no memory of him whatsoever. But apparently here's Don Tolliver, who was featured on Astroworld last year, and now is ahead of his own thanks to TikTok, because of course he does, and oh look, another guy who's riffing on Young Thug's sound and delivery, but with less texture and more annoying falsetto against a pile up of flutes and autotune. In other words, it's lyrically inert, sloppily produced, and trying for some sort of seductive hookup where apparently they're on the road to self-destruction, which is kind of a weird detail to include on any sort of love song, especially this one where the outro seems to lose any sort of coherence or direction in who he is talking to, be it this girl or an ex or someone he's taking them from. So yeah, I can't really call this good either. Yeah, let's move on. Number 47, Happy Holiday, The Holiday Song by Andy Williams. Hey to you. Okay, I'm normally familiar with the old canon of vintage Christmas songs, and I did not recognize this one from Andy Williams in comparison with It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year. So let me walk you through this. It's actually predating the more well-known song by about 20 years, originally written in 1942 and cut first by Bing Crosby. And it's been covered a number of times since then, bundled into a medley first by Kay Thompson, who actually mentored Andy Williams, and then covered by acts as varied as Johnny Mathis and the Carpenters to even she and him. But but it's not one you see covered often, mostly because it's not good. Yeah, the production here is as bright and bouncy as ever with the rich backing vocals and Andy Williams' liquid baritone, which always sounds pretty good, but it plays to slightly more dated ragtime elements with a wonky cadence and a bunch of nonsense writing that feels weirdly kitschy, even at the time. It's just a weirdly awkward song that doesn't play to any of the strengths of the time or of Andy Williams, and I'm a little bit baffled why this of all things came back. I mean, it could be worse, it could be Grandma got run over by a reindeer or something, but no, I'm not really a fan of this, and I kind of wanted to be. And finally, number 11, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. And once again, I'm stuck relying on The Weeknd to save a pretty rough week on the Hot 100, this time with a more pop-leaning cut from the two singles he released, with apparently interpolation from Take On Me by Aha and Holy Shit! This is great. Now let me blow through the obvious criticisms first. Between the buzzy analog synths, the groove that's jacked pretty directly from AHA, and production that only seems to amplify that cascading retro vibe, you can absolutely tell that The Weeknd is wallowing in his influences. But like with the dark wave flourishes on False Alarm, I kind of don't care because Blinding Lights leans into what makes this sound work. Enough genuine swell to feel immense as a synth pop song, an insanely catchy lead synth melody that actually has got some body and flair in comparison with how the sound would get cut to ribbons and gutted and washed out in the latter half of the 80s, or today, and while I kind of wish the guitars would pick up a little bit more sizzle and just go full new wave or post-punk, the fact that the gurgling foundation does come through is a huge positive. There's groove here along with the melody. Now more importantly, The Weeknd seems to understand why the best AHA songs work, because they were melodramatic romantics who went big and operatic in that time, which is why so much of the content is longing within a dramatic, frigid cityscape, and he's got the pipes and control of his range to make that work. Yes, I do think the song could have used a little bit more of an edge or a darker growl, it's not better than False Alarm, and the fact that the song was melded first with a Mercedes ad I do see is a little bit regrettable, but yeah, I needed The weekend to deliver a great song, I didn't see the ad to begin with, and I easily like it more than Heartless, so yeah, this is phenomenal, and obviously best of the week by a comfortable margin, but the worst? Yeah, Jonas Brothers are getting this for as canned and disposable as like it's Christmas is, no question, but I'm gonna focus on The weekend. it's such a better song. Now, but next week, tough to tell, as The weekend's probably gonna pick up some ground here, holiday music will solidify its grip, and we'll have to see if a Juice World tribute or a sophomore slump from Camila Cabello will break through, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse.